I get to talk about our work frequently, but I have never gotten to talk about it to science writers before. You guys are fascinating. Okay, this is good? Yeah, I'll try to stay back. Uh, I'm fascinated by people who actually love writing well enough to do it as a career, and I'm looking forward to meeting some of you. Um, and this is an informal occasion from my point of view, so please interrupt me with questions. Uh, you don't need to save them all until the end of this talk. <coughs> and I'll start by um, acknowledging Phyllis ATA, who is a PhD student who's, I'm going to just show you a tiny bit of her thesis work. And she did this together with Maggie DeCuevas, and this is my research group, and um, we are in the basic sciences at Hopkins. And uh, so I'm going to start with a very basic introduction because we're going to be talking about regenerative medicine all day. And uh, the cells in our tissues, most of them, are inactive. They're quiescent or senescent. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. The cells that are dividing to replenish most of our tissues are stem cells. And so this is a stem cell. And when it divides, it can make both another stem cell and a daughter that's going to be very different, and it's going to differentiate. The hard part is, in most tissues, they're indistinguishable. And there are very few cases where you can unambiguously tell these two apart. So that makes studying them challenging. Another general feature of stem cells is that they're under careful regulatory control from signals in their environment. And the, Steve mentioned humanopoietic stem cells. The whole idea that stem cells would reside in a niche or special local microenvironment came from work in humanopoiesis. And so these little green cells here are niche cells and they are going to produce local signals that basically distinguish stem cells from differentiating cells. And so that's a very big question in all of regenerative medicine and stem cell biology is how do niches work? What are the molecules? What are the cells? <coughs> um, therapeutically, how can we manipulate them? Uh, we talked about bone marrow transplants being hematopoietic stem cell transplants. But the truth is, if we really understood how hematopoietic stem cell niches worked, we wouldn't even need to transplant cells. We would need to manipulate signaling within tissues. And that would be a very far-reaching goal that I would envision in the future. And so basic science, like we do in fruit flies, is helping at the cutting edge of understanding how stem cells really work in real tissues so that we can apply that to lots of different situations. So I told you what stem cells do and that niches are important. And now I have to also deal right off the bat with this question I always get, which is, what do you do? You study, you, you take the testicles off of a fly? Like, how does this work? Okay, so I just have to dispel some of this right away. Um, I'll just make a simple comparison. You've all seen a mouse. You probably haven't looked closely at the testes, uh, but you probably know that these came from one and a half mice, all right? This is three of them. And I'm showing you this picture from the Brinster lab because this is a whole testis, um, and it's just been laid out under a stereoscope and photographed in natural light. And um, so you know the size. And there are thousands and thousands of tubules all compressed into this little egg-shaped structure. And this testis has actually had a stem cell transplant. So you can see this blue here, this blue here. Those are tubules that are filling up with stem cells and their daughters that have been genetically marked. And this is one that just had a few cells transplanted. This is one that had even more cells transplanted. But I put these pictures here so you can actually see some of the structure of the organ, okay? Now, human testes look a lot like this, just bigger, okay, just to give you an idea. But if you take a, an SEM of one of these tubules, so if you cut crosswise right here and look with a scanning electron microscope, this is what you'll see. So these little tiny blue nuclei out here at the periphery that are scattered along the edge, okay, some of those are stem cells. Some of them are differentiating cells. They look exactly the same. The niche in this tissue is still uh, the topic of much debate and study, okay? Even though we've known that people in mice and flies have stem cells in their testes. We've known that for decades. So it's a complex problem. That's why we do this other testis, okay? So in comparison, I showed you there's thousands of tubules in a mammalian testis. This is a fly testis. It's just one tube 
And actually, this is a photograph from a guy who teaches at a community college in Hawaii. This is not even immunostain. It's just bright field microscope image. And what he did was he dissected out this testis from a fly. It's big enough to get with just jeweler's forceps. And the, the end was torn open. And these are the bundles of sperm that have flown out of the tissue. Okay, So it's much simpler tissue. And we can do lots of great genetic tricks to study the cells. So that's why we do it with flies. Okay, So I'm going to explain to you what we know about stem cell niches from the perspective of using this tissue. But everything that we try to ask, we pick questions that we think will be of general relevance to all kinds of different tissues. Whether it's the mammalian testis, blood, bone, heart, you name it. Okay? So, oh, I should say, this is just the same tube I just showed you, but all we're doing here is staining for DNA. And every one of these testes that's coiled up here has a stem cell niche in it, and it's residing right here in this part of the tissue. And as the cells get older, they mature, and they move away from the end of the tip, and they eventually leave out of this duct here. But we're really going to just be focused on the stem cells in the beginning of the tissue. The fact that they happen to make germ cells is kind of arbitrary to us. Um, we, we're interested in the stem cells per se. So, if you look at this by EM, and can you, can you guys still hear me in the back? Okay. Oh, June, that's your event. What should I do? Dismiss. Okay. Okay. So, anatomy of an itch, up close. The good thing is, in this case, we actually know where the stem cells are, and we know which cells are talking to them. So this right here is the hub, and these are quiescent somatic cells, and they were set aside during development, and now that they're in an adult tissue, they don't divide at all, and they have stem cells. This is a yellow germline stem cells. That's what these cells are right here. They're, they're adhering to the hub, and this is the stem cell, and this is the differentiating daughter cell. This is going to make sperm. This cell is going to stay here and divide over and over again like a stem cell. And it's all because the hub is here sending local signals that keep this cell from differentiating. And there's actually another kind of stem cell in the whole mix. It's a somatic stem cell that cooperates with this germline stem cell to make this process of spermatogenesis happen. Just a quick question. Yeah. Is that hub a single cell? Or nope. It's actually a good question. It's about 20 cells tightly packed together in a little cluster. And then these are single cells that are attaching to it. Okay, any more questions about the anatomy of the system? Because I'm not going to tell you about any other cells, so these are it.